So, we all know the Apple tech that was launched this year, but what's going to launch in 2023? Okay, so let, let's start off with the iPhone 15. The iPhone 15 isn't expected to be a massive jump, but it's the start of a new phase of the iPhone. You know how the flat side started with the iPhone 12, and then the full screen started with the 10, and then I think the 6 was probably the start of one. And basically the iPhone 15 is the start of a new design change. What they're going to do is make it so it has a flat front and curved around the sides. And remember, anything I say in this video, this is not all confirmed. We don't know if this is all going to be exactly what they say. I, this could be completely, this video could com be completely obsolete by the time 2024 rolls around, but I hope it isn't. But basically, if the iPhone 15 respecting 6.1 and 6.7 inch display sizes, which, you know, it's about the same size. I think that is the same size that we have now. So not a big change in there, but the dynamic island is coming to all models, which that will be nice because the iPhone 14 wasn't a big jump over the 13. The 14, all it basically did was it, they gave it the slightly more powerful iPhone 13 Pro chip from last year that had another GPU core, and they gave it a better front camera and back camera. But again, it, it wasn't a big upgrade. Uh, but if Dynamic Island comes to it and it gets the design change, hopefully we'll see a bigger upgrade because it'll hopefully get the A16 Bionic chip, which isn't a big difference. The video about the performance up there and another thing that could be coming to the pros is a periscope zoom lens what this basically does is give it gives it like 30 times optical zoom range which is really really like that's going to be really nice again i have a video about the iphone 14 pro camera but one thing that this has that some other things won't is it actually finally adds something kind of competitor to Samsung Space Zoom that they introduced in the S20 Ultra. And honestly, I think it, it's a welcome addition. The iPhone has like been the loser at Zoom forever. And now with the 48 megapixel, it's getting better, but it's still not getting better. But now let's talk about the elephant in the room, a USB-C port, finally. The USB-C has been, basically the history is, Apple launched the original iPhone with a 30 pin connector and all the other ones launched with micro, which is not good. And um, they said something, or the EU made like a good deal about how you should use a micro USB chip or that the micro USB was better and that Apple could not use 30 pin anymore. So they made lightning. And then lightning was powerful. Lightning was more powerful than micro B. But when everyone else shifted over to USB-C, then lightning was left in the dust. Lightning was so lightning is so much slower that to get footage off my phone, it's like 4K, uh, 30 FPS footage. It takes so long. It, I'm welcome for this. And then a Qualcomm modem chip is also expected to be in the iPhone 15, and that is I don't even know what that would do. So I will probably put up on screen what that would do and hopefully that would do whatever it's gonna do. And another thing that's rumored to come with the iPhone 15 is a change in the naming. There's rumored a change where instead of the iPhone 15 Pro Max, like the iPhone 13 Pro Max, 12 Pro Max, and 11 Pro Max, that it's gonna be called the iPhone 15 Ultra. We don't know much if this is just gonna be just a new name, just completely replacing name, or if it's going to be like the Apple Watch Ultra and be a completely different device in its own regard. I don't know. Another thing that I'm actually going to probably buy and make a lot of videos on is the MacBook Pro 2023. I actually make a lot of videos on and about. Um, we don't know much about this also. It's, not, it's pretty likely to just be a spec bump, pop the new M2 Pro chip in it, say here it's 15% faster and 20% more efficient boom done 
it's probably the M2 Pro is probably going to have the weird 4 nanometer thing they did with the A16. And I mean, I can't complain. Um, some things I do hope for though. I hope I hope that they can put in Face ID. I don't know if they can because one thing is the if you've seen the Face ID inside of an iPhone, it's a very thick module and the screen of a, the new MacBook Pros are very thin, so I don't know if they're going to be able to fit it in and get all the right things in there. So I hope they can. I hope for, I, one thing I want is a USB-A port because I have a lot of USB-A accessories like my mouse that I barely ever use because I prefer trackpads. I don't know, I'm weird. Um, and I feel like a USB-A port would be really nice and then also a lower price, but that's probably not going to happen. And the next thing I want to talk about is what's going to come after the MacBook Pro. What's, what's, like in WW, they launched the M2 chip this year. Well, the M3 chip is rumored to launch at next dub dub, hopefully, and this is and the M3 chip is rumored to be on the TSMC 3 nanometer process. And the M3 chip is going to add maybe a chip into the lineup, add the M3 Extreme. And this chip isn't going to be going to anything else other than the Mac Pro. Also, side note, do you think they're going to put the M1 Ultra also in the iMac Pro, or is that just going to be uh, M1 Pro and M1 Max? Let me know down in the comments. But the Mac Pro 2023, um, German said that Apple's working on the first Apple Silicon Mac Pro, obviously, and they were reportedly ramping up the testing of the device internally. So hopefully that's coming close, because the, the uh, Intel Mac Pro from 2019... It, it, no, don't buy that. It, it's the only reason you would buy that is if you absolutely need decent performance and you need to rely on Intel for x86 or uh, boot camp. But if you, honestly, if you need boot camp, like just get an like don't get that Mac. You need boot camp, honestly. Get an get an iMac Pro. That's honestly not a bad deal. Anyway, back to the uh, Mac Pro. The high-end Mac Pro is said to feature chip options that are at least two, twice or four times as powerful as the M2 Max, dubbed the M2 Ultra and M2 Extreme. Okay, by the way, I've quoted part of this, so um, shout out to, or not shout out, but Mac Rumors, that's where I got all this information, so the link down in the description to go check that stuff out. Now, the M2 Ultra and M2 Extreme, and he expects the Mac Pro to be offered with 24 and 48 CPU cores, yikes, and 76 and 52 graphics cores. That is insane. 50, 152 graphics cores along, like, that, that is insane. Like, like, no one, I don't think anyone needs that. It's kind of diminishing returns at this point. Like, you have, you now it's not up to the to the amount of cores, it's the power of cores. Back on M1, when he had like seven GPU cores, yeah, that you could definitely like, that one definitely hike up the cores. Once you get to 152, I feel like you're just gonna be hitting diminishing returns. But one thing these cores do add is the ability to get 256 gigabytes of RAM. And that's not as much as the current Mac Pro, which has up to one and a half terabytes of RAM, but I'm pretty sure there's like an AMD processor that can go up to like four terabytes of RAM. And I don't understand how that's used. Like, unless you're just running Google Chrome all day, it, how do you use that? Another thing that's rumored to get the M3 chip is the iMac 24 inch, because it was refreshed in the beginning of the first quarter of 2021. And you like, it has the M1 chip in it, which is powerful enough. But it's one of those things, kind of like the Apple TV, where you might as well just stick a new chip in it and call it a new product. So no, like, it, I just think it should be re refreshed. Probably not going to be a big change in performance, just only a spec bump. The next thing is the iPad Mini 2023. Now, honestly, I personally like the iPad Mini. My dad's had the iPad Mini for a while. He uh, uses it a lot. I, he has the iPad Mini 6. Um... If I had to get an iPad, I'd probably still get, like, the M1 Air, but M1 iPad Air, not M1 MacBook Air. Anyway, the iPad Mini 2023 might not even be an iPad Mini 2023. It might be at, like, 2024, because it's expected to launch in either late 2023 or early 2024. And it is unlikely, and 
some people have been saying that it might be replaced by a foldable iPad, but Ming Shui Kuo said that is not a very likely thing to happen, and that it's most likely just going to be a spec bump and maybe add like Thunderbolt or Face ID. And then the last thing I want to touch on is AR and VR glasses, and we basically know nothing. But one thing I have a question about, I assume they're going to be powered by like M1 Apple Sil- M series Apple Silicon, but what if they're using the A16? Like if they're using, I have a feeling they're going to use the M series Apple Silicon because it's more powerful, but I wonder. Anyway, go down in the comments and tell me what you guys thought and what you guys are hopefully going to end up getting and what your favorite product from this year was. If you want to know, my favorite product that I bought was the iPhone 14 Pro, um, but I did not buy a ton. I bought iPhone and AirPods. So yeah, um, hopefully there will be the iPhone review out tomorrow. Um, I am currently still, I'm currently working on that. And go down, hit the bell, sub- subscribe, then hit the bell. Um, Hit the thumbs up and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.